Dear Mr. Albright, I was mighty pleased to learn that the photograph I sent to you of Wyatt Earp is now proudly displayed on the wall of your home. Here in Tombstone, we just celebrated the fifth anniversary of Wyatt Earp as our marshal. And folks came from miles around to thank him for restoring law and order to our fair town. I passed along your greetings to Marshal Earp, and he asked me to tell you how much he looks forward to meeting you in person. Wyatt Earp. In person. Just think, Mr. Albright, only another 12 months, only another 12 modest payments, and your name will be emblazoned on the doors and windows of Winnegar's Jewelry and Optics Arcade. As we here in Tombstone await that historic day, may you be inspired by that stirring phrase that has echoed since creation. Those four prophetic words that are the perfect motto for our fledgling profession. Let there be light. Respectfully yours, your fellow crusader for better vision, Charles W. W. Winnegar. Let there be light. Now, now, try not to blink. Now look to your left. Good. Now to your right. Good. Now slowly look up. Excellent. Well, does this mean that, that I require spectacles, Dr. Albright? Mr. Albright. Optometrists are not considered part of the medical profession, Mrs. Whitney. At least not yet. As for spectacles, my examination indicates you do indeed require them. Oh, dear. Not those thick ones, I hope. When you read by lamplight, do the letters seem unsteady and at times appear double? Yes. Do you find that by shutting one eye, you relieve the problem? Why, well, yes. How did you know that? Yes, Miss Lawton? There are four patients waiting outside, Mr. Albright. One of them has been waiting over an hour. I will be with him shortly. Yes, but you know how upset my uncle gets. Thank you, Miss Lawton. Where were we, Mrs. Whitney? Well, you were explaining, most fascinatingly, why I need spectacles, Mr. Albright. So I was. The human eye, Mrs. Whitney. A thing of beauty. Are you trying to ruin me, Mr. Albright? Is that your intention, to bankrupt this establishment? No, sir, not at all. Before you came here, there was a box with a dozen lenses sitting on the counter. Our customers tried them until they found the ones that gave them the best results. The average fitting time took less than five minutes. Mr. Lawton, one year ago, the ophthalmoscope was just coming into popular use. Most opticians knew nothing about Donder's work in refraction, hypermetropia, or for that matter, lamellar cataracts. I did not hire you to establish an institute for advanced optical study fully aware of that. How encouraging. You hired me because more and more of your customers were going across the street to purchase their spectacles at Mr. Miller Albright, Miller's. I do not care and to. And the reason they were deserting you for Miller's was because I was there prescribing eyeglasses that worked. Mr. But Albright. But if you feel that returning to your box with a dozen lenses will improve business, two weeks' notice will be more than satisfactory. Good night, Miss Lawton. Good night. Is everything all right, Mr. Albright? If you mean, am I still employed here, the answer, for the moment at least, is yes. I'm so glad. I mean, you do such fine work. Yours is such a noble profession. I'm afraid not everyone shares your high opinion of optometry. <gasps> oh, but what you do is so useful. I stand behind a counter all day long selling... Silly baubles to silly people. <laughs> what do you do when you aren't examining eyes? I read. I try to keep up on the latest ophthalmological findings and what's being done with lenses here and abroad. Do you ever go to the theater? 
concerts, nature walks, any hobbies you pursue? I collect antique spectacle frames. I mean, not connected with your work. One of sorts. What sort, Mr. Albright? <laughs> You'd probably laugh. Try me. The West. The West? The Wild West. Oh, that West. <laughs> what do you do with it? I, I, I don't do anything with it. I sort of carry it around in here. You think about it? I dream about it, Miss Lydon. What it would be like to lead a cattle drive across purple plains, stand shoulder to shoulder with men like Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp at the OK Corral, to watch the people of Tombstone flocking to a splendid optical establishment with my name emblazoned above its doors. That sounds heavenly. I daydream, too. My favorite is prowling the seas as a pirate. Sometimes when I'm showing jewelry to some fussy old crab of a customer, I think what fun it would be to hoist her from a mast or slice off her head. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Mr. Albright, do you realize that we've worked in the same store for nearly six months now, and I don't even know your first name? It's Ernest. Mine's Lucy, though I've always wished I'd been named Lucette or Lucia. I find all three extremely becoming. So's Ernest, so dashing. May I ask you something, Miss Lockwood? Why, of course. You don't think... If someone like myself went out west, do you think I'd be out of place? Heavens, no. I, I think you'd fit in splendidly. Really? <laughs> there is one bona fide hobby I pursue, Miss Lockwood. What? Gunfighting. Gunfighting? My, where on earth do you learn a thing like that? A farm in New Jersey, a chicken farm. You shoot chickens? Uh, no. I, I train <laughs> there with a gunfighter named O'Banion. Retired. But he used to be one of the finest shots in the West. Tutored by a genuine gunfighter? Goodness me. He says I'm a born marksman, though I'm still pretty hopeless in the draw. No, oh, I can't imagine you being hopeless in anything, Mr. Albright. When do you attend these shooting classes of yours? Every Sunday, rain or shine. How dedicated. The chicken farm is not the most refined environment in the world. I adore the smell of chickens. Miss Lyle. Lucy. Would you? Would I like to accompany you to the chicken farm and watch you practice the manly art of gunfighting? I'd love to. <laughs> Scaring the hell out of my chickens, but you ain't doing a darn thing to Billy. Stiff as a boar, I said. He's gonna draw loose. Yeah, like this. Ah! I'm half as fast as I used to be. Try again? Sure. Try all you like. Only remember, in a real shootout, he only gets to try once. To... Yeah, are you ready? Ready. I've never seen that done before. I don't know how that happened. Oh, what a... Thank you. Thank you. That's fine, thank you. Yeah. She's you know, this time. Sonny. Just go for Billy. Right in the old pumper room now. You ready? Ready. 
a man ever drawn and it's going right between the eyes and I look to see it hallelujah glory be the Lord the praise <laughs> I don't claim to know much about the art of gunfighting but it did seem to me that toward the end you were getting closer it was very unkind of Mr. O'Banion to carry on like that why I just recently read an article which said that making mistakes is an indispensable part of the learning process. What are you doing? That's your pistol. I think we had best start walking. Just leave that where it is, please. I'm not going to let you just throw it away. I'm, I know what it means to you. I have no further use for it. I obviously cannot shoot. In that case, you're not only a defeatist, you're a liar. Well, can you shoot or can't you? It depends. What does that mean? It means I can. I do it my own way. Show me your way. I am not a train seal, Miss Lott, and I see no reason, no reason at all why I should make Is a... Is it loaded? Yes. And are all those, whatever you call them, full? Chambers. This is idiotic. What can you hit? Can you hit that tree? Yes. If I hang my hat from this branch, do you think you can hit it? If I show you, will you drop this whole thing? No promises. Can you hit Mr. Albright? What if I throw a stick in the air? I've never tried a flying object. It's the first time for everything. I love you. I'm going to throw three of these sticks in the air as fast as I can. See what you can do. Can I help you, sir? Who are you? I'm the optometrist. <laughs> I'm the optometrist. And these instruments are my personal property. Perhaps you'd better speak to Mr. Lawton. Mr. Lawton. My, my. We don't even bother to knock. I thought the other day when we discussed our appointments... That you and I had resolved our differences. When I resolve a difference, Mr. Albright, I always do so on my terms. 
and all this business about you keeping up with the times. The agreeable young man who has taken your place will continue prescribing lenses at a more profitable pace. Oh, and another small matter concerning my niece. If you insist on continuing to see her, I shall have no recourse but to discharge her as well, which would be a pity, especially in this time of scarce employment. My dear Miss Lawton, I thank you. Your confidence in me has reignited a spirit of adventure that had begun to grow dim from too much planning and waiting. By the time you receive this, I shall very likely be on my way to Tombstone. Before long, however, I hope to be able to send you a small item that I believe will bring you some pleasure. An actual photograph of a fine new optical establishment with my name above the door. Until then, I remain gratefully yours, Ernest A. Albright. wonderful about it. It's so wide open. It's flat. It's flat and parched. It ain't had proper rain in close to eight months. <laughs> Would you look at that? First time out here. Yep. Thought as much. Headed where? Tombstone. You look eager to get there. Can't wait. Can't wait to get to Tombstone! <laughs> You're new to these parts, all right. Minnows, soda pop, biscuits, hurry folks, for it's all gone. Uh, I'll take a look at those. Minnows, soda pop, biscuits. Ooh, that's an awful lot of greenbacks to be carrying around out here. Ten your savings. I'll be trading it in for a store deed as soon as we get the tombstone. Well, we ain't there yet. The Doom Boys consider all trains and stagecoaches passing through them parts as their own personal property. Doom Boys? I thought all that had changed since Wyatt Earp's been Marshal. Only thing that's changed is that they stay clear of tombstone. Anything outside of town, they do with as they will. Why doesn't anyone go after them? Why? Luke? Lester, Lee, Lorne, Lynn, Link, Lyle, Leroy, Lazarus, Leander. Ten brothers? Every one of them big and mean and redheaded. It's not right, them being able to flaunt the law like that. Oh, you tell them that. With that bulging out of your jacket, you'll be the first one in this car they'll want to talk to. They'll have a real conversation with you. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, Luke! Who's this? 
It's, it's that English Duke we taught to dance outside of Tucson. I say ho, Jeff. I say ho, Jeff. Oh, oh, hey. 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 Oh. Hey, hey, what the hell are you doing? Hey. 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 I'm just funning with you. Don't be funning with me, Luke. Cut the funning. Give me that. All right, give me that one. Where the hell do you fix your gold examination case? You think your stars you didn't take your money and your life? I can't examine eyes without those lenses. You crazy? Money, money, money. You want to get us all killed? Come on. I have to have that case. Excuse me. What the hell you want, eh, four eyes? I just thought if you were done with that. Oh, four eyes wants his little old bag bag. It's just lenses. Hey, Luke. Huh? I got a customer here. He wants a return on his merchandise. What kind of merchandise? Here. What the hell is this? It's just lenses, Luke. <laughs> well, in that case... No! No! Don't stop! years to put that set together. Look, if stomping on lenses is your idea of fun, if you want something really good... He does that real life, don't he, Luke? Real party. That's medical equipment. Please be careful. Mr. Albright, I am honored to make your acquaintance, sir. I heard about what happened. A truly inspirational act of heroism. Truly inspirational. Thank you. Uh, and the two cases, too. The name is Dooley. Simon J. Dooley. Mr. Winnegar's attorney. Uh, isn't Mr. Winnegar? Supposed to meet you? Wore himself to a frazzle getting everything ship shape for you. Doctor ordered him to Silver City for a rest. We'll take the bags to the hotel. Oh, thank you. Thank my, you. my, won't a bed feel good after 12 days on a train? Oh, wait a minute. Hotel? My living quarters are over the store. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. The entire second floor painted fresh this morning. Hotel's just for tonight. Give the paint a chance to dry before you move yourself in. Yes, indeed. This town has grown and prospered since Mr. W got started here. This, this isn't the main street. Oh, no, no, just a shortcut to the hotel. Now, like yourself, Mr. W is a man of vision. Took one look at Tombstone and saw gold. Quite a profitable go of it, according to the financial statements he sent me. They sure look good, don't they? Give your hand with those? No, thanks. Just the same. Ah, you remind me of Mr. W when he was your age. Strong, broad shoulders, bright, eager eyes. Clearly a man who's come out here not just for money, but for adventure. And you won't be disappointed, no sir, Bob. This town is full of challenges and surprises. I can promise you that. Well, here we are. Tried the other hotels, book solid, every one of them. Well, I guess a bed is a bed. True, true. Uh, I suppose it's time. Time? Oh, yes, of course. Four hundred and fifty dollars, if you care to count it. If it's one thing I have learned in my profession, it's to know an honest man when I see one. An historic moment. And in addition to the keys to destroy your deed of ownership, the changing of the guard is now completed. From now on, it's the Ernest A. Albright Jewelry and Optics Arcade.
you the fellow that got in a shoving match with Luke and Lester Doom on the train this afternoon? I'm afraid I was mostly on the receiving end. <laughs> Marshal's in the saloon like a word with you. Marshal Lurk? Only Marshal we got. One day. told you about me? Uh, Ernest Albright. Give me two. Told me what? About my coming here to take over his store. Of course, the schedule's been moved up a bit. Twelve months, actually. You see, I had an altercation with my employer and events accelerated. As events sometimes do. Raise your two bits. Son, here in Tombstone, we gotta say it. Don't play hero unless you got the firepower to back it up. If you don't, you just stir up all kind of ruckus. When that happens, guess he's got to leave whatever he's doing and get things calmed down. You with me, son? <laughs> yes, sir. I wasn't trying to be a hero, sir. Next time, try not to be one even harder. Three jacks. Yes, sir. Don't call me sir. I'm a lawman. Not some dandified panty waist city slicker. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a real pleasure meeting you. I hope you'll honor a, me with your presence at the store's gala opening. Reopening. I'm going over to start getting things ready first thing in the morning. Break a day. Can't wait. Place. Down on the left. Last house. Not up on Main Street? Down on the left. What you want? <laughs> I'm looking for Mr. Winnegar's place. What for? I'm Ernest Albright. I bought it. Pay him for it? Says so right here. Hmm. Fancy writing, that's for sure. What's this? Winnegar's place. No, where's the store? Ain't no store. No, no. Winnegar's. Jewelry and Optics Arcade. What he's got, you're looking at. Is this some kind of joke? You don't see me laughing, do you? Big bay windows. Paneled reception area. Two up-to-date examination rooms. The only thing that Winnegar uses this place for is hauling up between bouts of gambling. Gave up his store hmm, 20 years ago. 
20 years ago. Oh, my God. As a matter of fact, just leave the bottle. Morning, Marshal. Morning. Well, looky here. Get the law in on this. That's what we need to do. How do you report a robbery in this town? You find a marshal. Then what? Make sure he's on duty. Are you on duty? Nope. What'd they steal? A pair of your fancy spectacles? My store. Head gun, boy. By mail. Yeah, you're the second party old Charlie Winnegar snagged himself this year. Man by the name of Dooley meets your train, huh? So he had uh, winter gone to Silver City? Huh? Put you up in some back street boarding house? <laughs> Talk about tombstone being a gold mine. <laughs> well, that was Charlie Winnegar. <laughs> I thought a marshal was supposed to see to it that the law gets obeyed. That people don't get swindled out of their life savings. That outlaws don't hold up trains like they own them. Especially. If that marshal's name is Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp. You done? Oh, yes, sir. I mean, yes, sir. Marshal. Mister, how are you? get back on the same train to where I'd come from. My dearest Miss Lawton, I send you warmest regards from historic Tombstone. It is everything I expected it to be and much, much more. Please pardon my delay in writing, but as you can imagine, my first few weeks here have been a whirl of non-stop activity. It is, I must confess, taking a little longer than I expected to adjust to the more casual, more leisurely manner in which business is conducted in this town. But I do my best to overcome these minor hurdles with an ever greater ever more dedicated commitment to the calling that has beckoned me here. Excuse me, ma'am. Could I interest you in a pair of high-quality eyeglasses? And, of course, there are compensations. The beauty of this land the unspoiled charm of its people, the ever-unfolding adventure of frontier life, provide a succession of thrills and rewards that can scarcely be put into words. Remarkable. Remarkable. I know what I've done. Is impulsive and mad and fraught with Lord knows what consequences, but Mr. Albright, my dear Mr. Albright, I have no choice. 
The morning after I received the letter announcing your departure, as I entered my uncle's store, I felt myself crushed by this dehumanizing force, a, a force I knew would continue to bear down and suffocate me day after day, year after year, forever. Aren't you even a tiny bit pleased to see me? Miss Lawton, your arrival here just now is, well, to put it mildly, ill-timed. Why is that, Mr. Albright? Because you have traveled three-quarters of the way across this vast country to join me, and... And I am departing this hard place and returning east on the Friday train. Departing? But your wonderful new store... There is no wonderful new store, Miss Lawton. There is only this shed. This hole in the wall. This hovel. This? Yes. This. Oh, but I, I'm certain with time and patience, wonders can be done to restore it. Uh, no, they can't. Miss Lawton, when you have learned how I've allowed myself to be swindled out of my life savings, how I've alienated the only man in this lawless territory who might have been able to assist me, how in three weeks, I've earned a grand total of one rail fare and 93 cents. I'm confident you'll board that train with me without a moment's regret. <coughs> Mr. Albright, I accept that a setback or two may have temporarily dampened your spirits, but snuffed out the fierce grandeur of your vision? Absolutely not. I know you, Mr. Albright. You're a fighter, not a quitter. Glorious country. Isn't it absolutely glorious? Glorious. Won't Mr. Winnegar be surprised when he finds we've come all the way to Silver City just to pay him this call? When he sees you're prepared to reclaim your money by whatever means possible. He'll find another place to hide. Cucumber sandwich? If he hides, we shall find him. If lawyers are needed, we shall hire lawyers. If detectives are required, we'll hire detectives. Miss Lawton. Do you know what this bag contains? Your pistol. Do you know why I brought it along? For our protection? To pay for this ridiculous expedition. You plan to sell it? Oh, but we have this. $86.50. You have, Miss Lawton. I will not allow you to throw good money after bad. Mr. Albright, this is my money. My <laughs> Those aren't the, the... Those aren't the, the... Yes, they are. Oh, oh, Mr. Albright, there must be something you can do. I hide my money. Cutie. Nothing that would interest you. And kindly do not address me as cutie. Oh, a spirited little one, aren't you? Let's see what little delicate items we have in here. You're not hiding anything from little old Lester, are you? Let me just check for my own self. Don't you dare. Don't believe what you just done, Four Eyes. You're gonna have to pay for that, you know. Now the other one went into it just a little bit different. All right, go on, I heard you, am I now? Show you some real fancy shooting now. Who the hell belongs to that? It's mine. What's it for? 
It's my, 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 my pistol. Your, 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 your pistol? What for? For learning to shoot. Bring it up here. Hurry up. Open it up, killer. Open it up. Come on. You needn't waste your time with that. Here. Come on, let's let's go. Yeah, you two keep riding the train now, will you? Bye, folks. Yeah. What are you doing? I will not stand by while he rides off with your life. There are three of them. I counted. But your glasses. I can sight with my left eye. What you doing? No one's taking a shot at a dude who went before. So we're finally starting to fight back. Yeah! Yeah! There are only nine of them left. Yeah. Well, who organized the posse brought him in? Well, to us, there's no posse, Mr. Marshall. It was this man right here. Brought Lester Duke down all by himself. Damn the shooting I ever saw. Was well, that a fact? You folks here tell me you had yourself quite a day, Albright. Albright. Ernest Albright. Well, I guess congratulations are in order. Marshal, if I may, Marshall. this is Miss Lucy. Right, Pope! This is his only mean trouble for Tombstone, Marshal! Yeah? What kind of trouble, Mayor? Well, the Doom Boys getting back at us for this. You know, mayhem, looting, destruction of property. Well, I think we can handle anything they might try. Hey, yeah. Thornbush, yeah. instead of worrying about your precious real estate, how's about drinks on the house for Mr. Albright and Marshal Earth yeah. there? Yeah! for everybody on the house. Yeah! Oh, come on, Thornbush. You own the damn saloon and just about everything else in town. Uh, all right. Yeah! Where'd you learn how to shoot, Albright? New Jersey. New Jersey? Here they come! Small way. The welcome I got when I brought in the Dalton boys. Kansas City, 20 years ago. 15. Jim Ryer, Silver City. He's on the train. Saw the shootout. Get you a sheriff of Silver City. We'll build a jail of our own. Yeah! Sheriff Bob. You know what you've done by bringing in a doom boy, don't you? Huh? You kicked open a hornet's nest. That's what you've done. Much obliged if you can describe this for my son, Mr. Albright. To Jacob. In fact, how the hell come you're still here when I told you to clear out three weeks ago? You think a couple lucky shots put you up there with the likes of Wider? Huh? Do you? A couple lucky minutes up against my 20 years of law, man? 20? Oh, it was 30 years ago in Abilene when you first brought in Cecil. All right, does it. Folks! Folks! Young Mr. Balbright here, not having had enough excitement for one day, is eager to give us another demonstration of his shooting skills. <laughs> This time, not from the inside of a train car, but out in the open, shooting it out man to man with me. Marshal, yeah! we have a misunderstanding here, right? 
Josh. Come on. Uh, Give him your gun. Sorry to shoot it out. With you, it's not matter with anyone else. Or this morning, I didn't even point at a gun at a person. You stand right there. Mayor Thornbush, would you do the honors? He's extremely sensitive. Are you sure this is in the best interest of Tombstone, Marshal? I don't think I'm speaking through my hat when I say that my interests and the interests of Tombstone have been and always will be one and the same. Very well. Stand prepared, gentlemen. You will draw on the count of five. One. Two. him at the same time. Yeah! Yeah! The Lord love you, Wild Earth. Well, I think what you did today was remarkable. I suppose there's nothing I can say that'll persuade you not to leave. Can you hear me, Mr. Albright? Perfectly. I mean, you are the first person to apprehend a doom boy, ever. It was sheer jealousy that made Marshall Earp challenge you to that horrid shoot-up. Shoot-out? shootout. Most important of all, I'm convinced that if you stay, the people of Tombstone will clamor for your services and your business will flourish. Any comments on the above? No. There's the most vivid full moon tonight. Reminds me of that first night when you told me about the Wild West. Who would have dreamt we'd actually end up here together for a little while, anyway? I'm sorry about the way things have turned out. Oh, don't be. Really, what happened today is something I'll treasure as long as I live. Why, a heroine of the most thrilling, romantic novel couldn't have asked for a more wonderful adventure than I experienced on that train. Oh, my, uh, things, uh... You know what else I think? What? I think you're a very brave and generous man who really wants to help people to see. And if you've been a bit too trusting in your business dealings and haven't, as yet, fully master drawing a pistol. You are still most decidedly a genuine bona fide hero. And no one can tell me otherwise. <sighs> Good night. Good night, Miss Lucy. Lucy.
still here, huh, Balbright? I'm leaving tomorrow on the noon train. Three weeks too late. I'd like to thank you for what you did today. Or rather, didn't do. What the hell are you talking about? You're shooting around me the way you did. Around you? Don't plop. I tried to get to you, jackass. Did my best. I don't understand. No, you wouldn't. Every one of those damn bullets was meant for you. To hit me? To kill you. Why am I still here? How do you hit someone who keeps splitting in two? Wait a minute. Are you saying you missed me unintentionally six times in a row? Six lousy, stinking times. Fast on the draw, but blind as a bat. What do you think I stayed in the saloon all day drinking myself sick? We. You should have asked me to stand closer. Guess what? You almost did. <laughs> You're about as badly off as I am. Worse! <laughs> you can save up your pennies and start again someplace else. What? Wait here for me a minute, all right? What the hell for? I'll be right back. Balbright, hey! Bring me something to drink. Tombstone's dying, Balbright. Dying of a yellow liver. Put your head back. You know what I'd have done a few years back, Balbright? Huh? I'd have deputized myself a dozen men. And I'd have rode out there to where the Doom Boys camp. And shot up the whole lot of them. Look to your left. Nowadays, I sit locked up here in Tombstone, just playing at being Marshal. Why, those red-headed vultures call the rest of the county their own. I look to your right. That ain't right. It stinks. I'm a has been, Bo Bryant. About as much use as a horse or three legs. I'm gonna put some more atropine drops in your eyes. Oh. I just close them for a few seconds. I may be blind, but I ain't yellow. I'm gonna take a stand. If that means going down with a hail of bullets, well, so be it. I'll take every last one of them with me. All nine of those. Carrot top. Bastard. I think before you take anybody on, you're gonna need to see a whole lot better than you do now. I'm just the one to help you. Marshal, sir. Uh. Oh, 
duty. Oh, my God, my train. This is Liberty Elmo. We need you right away. Another damn cat stuck up some damn tree. Marshal, open up, please. There's a packet of Doom Boys headed towards town. Said they're going to free up their brother. Uh, who's guarding the jail? No one. No one. No one. Deputies Collins and Richie scattered as soon as they heard the news. Said they didn't feel so good. Oh, that's just fine. That's just dead. What are you going to do? What the hell you think I'm going to do? I'll have to do for now. What do you want, Bob? Right here for you. What the hell are these? Temporary pair. Not your exact prescription. Get out of my way. But, Marshal. All I did with my eyes last night, I might have known you were up to no good. But you're going to need these. These could save your life. Get yourself and those things out of my sight. Marshal, my train leaves in half an hour. If you'll try these on. Just for a second, you'll listen. listen. And you listen good. Any minute, a pack of cold-blooded murdered outlaws eat the likes of you for breakfast. They're going to come riding up that street. And when they do, they're not going to find wide earth waiting for them. Wearing a pair of sissy glasses. Here they come! Marshal, when they get done with you, you're going to have so many bullets in you, you're going to look like a snare. Elmo, you stay here with him. There's three of them. Three's my lucky number. I saw him. Hey, you round his face. You try to back up Urban here. I swear to God, when my brothers get me out of here, I'm going to take your head and use it for target practice. You hear me? Huh? I don't feel so good. Go right ahead and pass out right next to him. Yeah. Elmo. Elmo. Set on getting Lester back. Well, if you want to see him that bad, I'd be glad to fix the three of you up in a joining cell. Plenty good enough. Let's get this off you, Marshal. Get it up good here. You better have a seat. Marshal, may I have a word with you? Alone? Anything you gotta say, you can say it right here. You know what you just said out there about your eyes? During the shootout, I. 
was shooting, too. <laughs> you a legend that Marshal Herb didn't gun down those two men himself? Neither one. Young fella, that is the most preposterous, the most slanderous. Let him ever say, Doc. Look at where they've been hit. In their gun hands and shoulders. Is that where you were aiming? Marshal, this shoulder of yours is gonna happen. The point is, you could have done it alone if you'd had these. There's seven of them still out there. These mean the difference between life and death. You've done. I, I just hope you'll accept these in the spirit that they're offered. That's half my answer. And here's the other half. Mister, I think it's high time you got back to New York to all those squinty-eyed city folks just dying to have you put those things on their faces. Expected came up. There is no need to explain, Mr. Albright. I'm certain that whatever detained you was of sufficient importance to justify your delay. It wasn't. I shouldn't have bothered. Uh, uh, please be careful with that. It contains valuable optical equipment and must be damaged. Well, now that you're reunited with your luggage, I wish you a safe and speedy journey. Slot. Slot. Where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying. Staying? What do you mean, staying? Renting a room, finding myself a position here in town, not leaving. <laughs> but yesterday, I thought we when agreed you came that... back to the room, only to steal away like a thief in the night. I said to myself, Lucy Lawton, why are you going? I didn't steal away. I... My fear answered. You followed him out here. You have to follow him back. What other choice do you have? No other choice. The only sensible choice. And then choice. just now, as I was about to let them load my bags on the train, I realized that even if I wanted to follow you, I couldn't. Because you weren't here to follow. But you can't stay behind alone in this lawless town because of some last minute whim. There is no need to shout, Mr. Albright. I am not shouting. I am simply trying to make you see that this is no time to be giving in to a, a spur of the moment, a emotionally biased decision. Actually, I'm very grateful for last night. If the veil hadn't been lifted from my eyes, I might have spent the rest of my life like one of those, blindly trailing after you in hopes that one day you'd lavish as much care and affection on me as you do on those precious lenses of yours. You may, Mr. Albright, be committed to improving the vision of others, but when it comes to opening your eyes, and most especially that locked up heart of yours, you're as blind as a bat! So I, I do wish to share my... Come back, please! Miss Lutton. Miss Lutton? The midst of a cattle drive is no place to discuss our feelings for one another. Goodbye, oh, Brad. I hope you and your lenses have a very happy life together. I'll be right back. My cases! No tickets, no ride! Oh! 
Okay, honey, I don't fight. Just get into town. Come back east. Don't tell me. You met a man who promised you matrimony, a home, and works. And when you got here, you found a no good two timing skunk shacked up with some other dame. And on top of that, when you started to ball about it, he cracked you on right in the kisser. And if that wasn't bad enough, he threatened you. He said he was going to cut you up into little pieces if he ever so much as laid eyes on you again. Come on inside, honey. Meet your sisters. you over to them Rome crazed rustlers. Naked. Have you laid their trust up all night? Those rats and vermins crawling all over your face. What happened then? The cavalry came and rescued me. The cavalry? Only about three or four hundred of them. And there was this fierce shoe. Fierce. And they killed the rustlers. All except the one with the eye patch. The white slaver who kidnapped me in the first place. Oh. John Evans Chamberlain? The man I'd come out here to marry. Oh. Man. Uh. Here you go, honey. Best medicine there is for skunk bites. Go ahead, belt it down. You needn't bother. As soon as I find my friend, we'll be on our way. If you want a public apology, just tell Marshal Orp I didn't mean a word. We'll get that. No, no, no apologies. We come here to express our gratitude on behalf of the people of Doomstone for your heroic act of bravery back at the jail. Lester Doom backed up your story. So did Deputy Elmo here. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't witnessed it with my own two eyes. I've never seen shooting like that before. Whatever I did was to help Marshal Earp. Well, we'll we, we take care of that now. Well, that's why we're here. Absolutely. Marshal Earp is gone. Got kind of upset when he discovered who'd done the real shooting. Mm -hmm. we, we got Bat Matheson coming over from Dodge City to take over. Trouble is, he won't be here for three or four days. See, I were asking if you just got to stand in till then. Me? Indeed. You're asking me to fill in as Marshal? Well, you're the only one that can keep the rest of the doomed boys at bay until Bat Matheson gets here. <laughs> We, 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 we'll double the reward money. We'll triple the reward. 
Well, we'll deputize every able-bodied man in town and put him under your command. Absolutely. I'm just an optometrist. <laughs> Little girl, I used to pretend I was a chanteuse. Oh, it must be heaven to be able to perform on stage like that. Do you ever do it? What? Perform in front of people. Me? Oh, heavens, no. Before you know it, you've got gold dust in your eyes. You've got to dream of dreams and live in lies. We'll keep you dancing on a cloud beneath the sky. Have you seen Miss Lawton? Have you seen my friend? Who built your store, Mr. Albright? Right here in the center of town. A whole building big enough for ten examination rooms. Lunatics. No one in this town wants glasses. Oh, you're wrong, Mr. Albright. We all want glasses. Why, I'll buy a dozen pair myself. So will I. I'll buy a pair. Or two. Good Lord. Frankie went down to South yeah. Looked in a window so high. There she saw her loving Johnny. Yeah. Making love to Nellie Bly. He was her man. But he done her Johnny saw Frankie a coming. Out the back door he did sweep. But Frankie took aim with her pistol. And the gun went root. Choo, choo, Here was her man. What are you doing? But it didn't hear her. Whatever, poor girl, Brian. <laughs> Place. It's not for you. Oh, but it is. I like it here. <laughs> the terms of our proposal are unagreeable, Mr. Albright. We're prepared to let you make your own. It's like we need to talk. We need to put things in focus. But I don't want to put things in focus. Tonight he's having the most wonderfully defocusing effect on me. Just state your terms, Mr. Albright. No reasonable request to be refused. Look, I told you, I, I don't want the job of Marshal, not even for a few hours. Hey, you really want him as Marshal? We most certainly do. Oh, he'll never accept. Too afraid you'll fall down laughing if you ever see him shoot. <laughs> you're so worried about your precious dignity that you're willing to give up the chance of a lifetime. Is it so? Why, I've got more spirit of adventure in my little pinky than you have in that whole boring optometrist carcass of yours. Oh. You're drunk. And you're a sissy. Oh, oh I am, am I? Still there, Thornbush? Oh, right behind you, Mr. Albright. Is the position still open? Most assuredly. The answer is yes. Under which terms? All of them. <laughs> the tombstone wants me as its marshal. I accept the call for duty. Until Marshal Albright here goes for his gun. Right. right. Ain't that letting them get off a of clone? If we start shooting any sooner, they're likely to take cover. Suppose they don't show. <laughs> what if the sun doesn't set? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I, I, I guess we all know what we have to do. Gentlemen, Doc Wilson here will show you where to take positions with your men. Elmo, you better get back and watch the prisoners. Good luck. <clears throat> Done. Everyone is pitching in so beautifully. Nervous? No. I know they're dangerous men, but you're such a remarkable shot, and everyone here is completely behind you. Do you think all seven will come? Yes. Can we hold off that many? I hope so. Just keep with what you're doing, folks. Nothing to worry about. Everything's under control. Hey. Look, he shot my brother. He tried to go for my gun. I can't find it. Go get that one. I think you better wait. It's all right, Mr. Lane. He's hurt. I'm going to try to help him. I got you, Flora. That little cutie to go bring those keys over here. Oh, I'm gonna rip your head right off. <laughs> Miss Lawton. Yes, Mr. Albright. Kindly pick up the keys, Miss Lawton. <laughs> Have you got them? Yes, I have, but. Just do as I say, please. No discussion, no argument. <laughs> Will you do that, Miss Lawton? I'll do exactly as you say, Mr. Albright. Good. Run, Miss Lawton! Run! <laughs> men will be back any minute. There isn't a soul out there to help you. Three of them were enough to make this whole town run. What can you, single-handed, do against seven of them? I'm not gonna let you go. I'm not gonna let you get killed for this stupid, ungrateful little town. I'm not gonna allow you to get killed.
Where's Lester Lynn and Leroy? Tell her if he's got to the count of ten to get him out of here. We're coming in to get him. Don't waste your time counting. They're staying where they are. Where the hell's the marshal? You're looking at him. <laughs> what is this, some kind of damn joke? You don't see me laughing. You gonna stand us all off, huh? You know a cat two bit ball dragging little runt. Let's get him! Yeah! 